using the right arrow really makes a difference in your shooting. So even if you're new to the sport of archery, you've probably heard things like spine, GPI, GPP, and it can be a little bit confusing, but we're gonna talk about that in this video and hopefully to give you some clarity and help you understand when you go to select your next arrows. Okay, now spine comes in two different uh, flavors, if you will. You have static spine and then you have what's called a dynamic spine. Now manufacturers will send out their arrows with the static spine rating stamped on the arrow. Now how they come up with the static spine rating is simply this. They'll take their arrow, they'll take a 1.94 pound weight or an 880 gram weight, hang it in the center of the arrow. Now how much that flexes or bends, they'll take that and multiply that by a thousand. So this is a 500 spined arrow. So what's happened is, as they've done the measurement, it's flexed point 0.5 inches. They multiply that by a thousand, it gives them a 500, thus a 500 spined arrow. Now this is the same for all arrows. Up next is what's called a dynamic spine. Now dynamic spine can be altered by you, the archer, and this is not something that's set in stone and there are so many combinations to affect the dynamic spine of an arrow. Really it's just a matter of what weight you're using. Uh, are you using weighted inserts? Are you using a heavier fill tip, a lighter fill tip? That's going to have an effect over the dynamic spine or how much it actually flexes as it leaves the bow upon the shot. So again, spine is an important part of your arrow selection and you want to make sure that you get the right spined arrow for the draw weight bow you're using. You don't want to get too weak of a spine because if you get too weak of a spine, what happens that could cause the arrow to flex too much and explode upon release. If you get too stiff of a spine, what's going to happen is your accuracy, your consistency and groupings, and maybe even hitting the target is going to suffer because this arrow is not going to flex enough to correct itself in flight as it's going towards the target when you release from your bow. Okay, so we know static spine is rated by the manufacturer. Where you can have an effect on the arrow is by affecting the dynamic spine. Now the dynamic spine of an arrow is really up to the user. It's, it's really what you do to it, how short you cut it, how long you leave it, what inserts you put in, what weights you use up front. All of that's gonna have an effect on the dynamic spine of the arrow. And really that's just how it shoots when it releases from your bow. Now this gill tip hunter here, was a 340 spine and what I did was put a 100 grain brass insert in it using a 125 grain fill tip up front. Now I wanted to shoot this out of my 50 pound bow. The thing about it was at the full length 32 and a quarter this was too weak so it was giving me a knock left indicating that it was too weak. So what I did was I took quarter inch increments off of this until I got this arrow to fly straight without fletchings on it. So that's called a bear shaft tune. Now I got this down to 30 and a quarter with the 100 grain insert and then the 125 grain fill tip up front. It gave me a really good arrow flight with this. Now surprisingly, this shoots really well out of my 40 pound, 45 pound bow as well. So that is how you affect dynamic spine. Now let me caution you a little bit against doing this if you're a new archer. If your form, your anchor, and your release or the fundamentals are not on point and consistent, Trying to tune an arrow is going to be an exercise in futility for you because if your if you're erratic, if your arrow flight is erratic because of something you're doing with your form or your release or even your anchor, you're never going to tune that arrow. So I would suggest that you get the fundamentals down, practice, 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 make sure that that's consistent, and then start going down or venturing down the road of tuning arrows for your particular setup. You'll get a lot more enjoyment out of it if you wait and take some time to get that in, in place before you start doing this. But again, your dynamic spine, you can have a, a major effect on that in a positive or negative way, uh, just depending on how you shoot. Now we've talked about spine, let's talk a little bit about GPI. Now, if you don't know what GPI is, it is simply this grains per inch, meaning for every inch of arrow, you have a certain amount of grains in that inch. Now, why this is important, if you're using these for a hunting setup, you want a higher GPI. If you're using these for a target shooting only setup, you want a lower GPI. Now, why that's important is because a higher GPI is gonna add more mass to this arrow, depending on how long it is, 
and it's going to have more velocity and more of an impact on the target or whatever it is you're shooting at. Now, if you have a lower GPI, that's going to cause a flatter trajectory and it's going to cause the arrow to fly faster. This is really good to know if you're setting up your bow for hunting or you're setting up your arrows for hunting or if you're just strictly going to be target shooting, 3D shooting, something like that. A lower GPI will probably do you a lot better. But again, it's another important factor when it comes to putting your arrows together and getting proper arrow flight out of your bow. So keep that in mind along with your spine. Look at the GPI and determine what it is you're going to be doing when you're out shooting archery. GPP. Do you know what GPP is? GPP is grains per pound. Now, a lot of bow manufacturers will put on their bows a recommended grains per pound that they prefer you shoot when it comes to arrow selection. Mine is an 8 to 10 on my 50 pound bow. Now, that's where they say the bow performs the best if you have an arrow that weighs between 8 grains per pound and 10 grains per pound. Now, if you exceed that lower threshold, that's where you could get into a little bit of a dicey situation, especially if you really go beyond that and bottom that arrow out to where it's super light for the bow you're shooting. Because a lot of bow manufacturers will not honor the warranty if you're shooting arrows that are below that lower threshold. And plus, it could put the bow into a dry fire situation and cause damage to the bow and even worse yet, cause bodily harm to you. Now let me give you an example of how to figure GPP. Let's take this Easton 2219, which is what I've been shooting out of my 50 pound bow and they're performing mighty well, I must say. So let's take this arrow, let's get rid of the insert, let's get rid of the field tip up front, let's get rid of the fletchings and the knock. So this arrow at 31 inches has a 13.8 grains per inch. So if I take that and multiply that by 31, that gives me a 427.8 grain arrow weight. Now, let's add everything to it. Let's put in the 11 grain insert, the 125 grain fill tip up front. I don't know what the fletchings weigh, uh, but and then you add your knock on there as well. And then we weigh the arrow. That's gonna bring me to a total weight with everything included at 31 inches, 563.8 grains. Now that's a heavy arrow, but out of a 50 pound bow, this arrow performs really well. So to, to find the grains per pound, what I do is I take that number, 563.80, divide that by 50, that gives me 11.28 grains per pound that I am shooting through my bow with this arrow. Now, what that means in a hunting situation, this is gonna have a lot more knockdown power. It's gonna have a lot more penetration power. Now, if I were in a target shooting only situation at longer distances, because of the weight of this arrow, it's gonna drop faster and it's going to have a lot less of a consistent straight arrow flight. It's not going to be very flat. It's going to, again, the trajectory is going to go off at longer distances. But for hunting situations at 10, 20, or 25 yards, this would be a perfect arrow for that. So again, your grains per pound is something that you should take into consideration whenever you're building your arrows, depending on what you're going to be doing with those. If you're hunting, you kind of want a little bit more of a grains per pound. And again, if you're target, take that down a little bit lower, but try not to exceed that lower threshold. And if you do, don't exceed it by too much. You can still get the bow to perform, but you don't want to be unsafe with that. So I hope this little video has been entertaining at least, maybe helped you out some. If you had some confusion about some of those things, some of those things, the GPI, the GPP, the spine, all of that. Hopefully this has helped clarify some of that. And hopefully as you get better, you know, at your form anchor and release and everything's starting to jive and you're being consistent with your shooting and you really want to explore the world of tuning arrows, hopefully this will give you some insight into that. Again, I can't stress enough, if you're, if you're not consistent with those things and the, the fundamentals rather, if you're not consistent with the fundamentals, don't start tuning arrows because again, you could run down so many rabbit holes trying to figure that out and wondering why the arrow is not flying right when it may not be the arrow at all. As always, thank you for coming by and hanging out with me. I hope you enjoy the content that you do see here. And if you're new to my channel and you like what you see, please consider subscribing and hit that thumbs up if this video is worthy of a thumbs up. And if it's not, you can hit the thumbs down too. I'm good either way. But I do appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming by. I hope you guys have a great day, a better day tomorrow, and a wonderful week ahead of you. And until next time.